Man, I was getting myself on hold. This is King Eric, the media assassin. We are now tuned in to episode 481 of Off the Cuff Radio. And this show today is very special, one, man, because what we love to do, we love to pay homage to the DJs, the true sorcerers of this shit. And this guy on the line with me right now is one of the true imprints of that of that movement right there. The DJ is coming back, and they're talking about the new tour they got going on. So without further ado, let's all bring DJ True Justice on the line. What's good, brother? Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all. How's it going? How's it going? That's that's a crazy intro, and I, and and I and I stand behind every word. <laughs> man, I had a. Let me tell you something, man. I had a cold. I did, I did, that's the second intro I did because I did the first intro, but I accidentally had the phone on holes. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, word. Oh, that was that was it. Man. But I mean, it it's good. It's good. Yeah, man. So. It's definitely an honor having you on, man. I've been listening to some of your stuff, you know, to get a good feel out on what to talk about and what we're building on. And, man, man, you're a true cornerstone to the, the DJ sound that, you know, that's needed, man. And I know you got a tour going on, so you care to tell us about that? Yeah, man, I, I appreciate the kind words, man. I, I, I pride myself on, on, on holding the torch. Um, man, it, doing these shows every night, um, it, it seems like man, the, the the DJ and turntables and the fundamentals are 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 becoming a thing of the past, man. So I'm I'm here to, I'm here to hold the torch. But like you said, we are we are in we got about a week left on this uh, seventh annual Slap Frost tour. Uh, we got a night off right now. We're in Mount Pleasant, Iowa. And we're playing tomorrow in Fairfield, Iowa. <clears throat> it's been a nice run. We started on the 25th of this month in Bloomington, um, Illinois. Okay. And who you guys got on tour with y'all? We are rocking with Foreign Legion um, out of Oakland, California, uh, as well as Vocab Slick out of Santa Rosa, California. Um, we have a, um, a brand new group, um, Justin's Case, out of the Bay Area. Um, the members uh, are from different areas. Uh, the producer, AG, out of Oakland. Myself, uh, DJ True Justice, out of Berkeley. MC Paws, who does conga, congas, percussion, and vocals in the group. He's out of San Francisco, California, as well as Equipto. Who's vocal? Uh, who's on vocals in Justin's case? He's from San Francisco as well. Uh, we also have the newcomer, the baby of the uh, of the tour. Her name is Moon Magic, representing Sacramento, California. Um, and to round out oh, the tour, we have Romel with two L's, representing Louisville, Kentucky, hosted by one and only Z Man. That's myself is, and yeah, myself and DJ DS are the two DJs on the tour holding it down on the turntables, actual turntables. None of that. None of the MP3 strictly turntables. Well, no, 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 no. I can't. I can't. I can't front like I don't do a mix of digital and um, you know the turntables. So what I'm what we use. <clears throat> it's a digital program, um, Serato. So we do we do trigger MP3s off of you know our rig, but it all, at the end of the day it all goes through the turntables. In this day and age, you have a choice to you know uh, spin you know MP3s on turntables or you know controllers. Um, you you have the choice to do vinyl as well. Well, you know I I carry vinyl in my bag, but just as far as the analog and the digital thing, I take I take I take both with me. And that's good to have because digital is convenient. It's it's good for convenience purposes because. Well, well, brother, I'll tell you, is, I'll, I'll tell you like this. Mm-hmm. I t- I'll tell you like this. What, what, uh, OG told me it's like um, after years of carrying um, vinyl, 
crates to parties and shows and rocking. It's it's like when Serato came, the whole digital uh, realm came to us that was you know that was holding the torch for vinyl. It, it's like a graduation present, bro. You know, you you could take your whole record collection, uh, it, basically in the palm of your hand and go rock a show. Before we used to you know have to pack up a a, a van full of records, you know. So it's the same concept, but in a digital age. You know, it's just a lot more convenient. Absolutely, absolutely, and not to mention you with you being so hard working with the tour, man. How does it also feel knowing to get back outside? Because man, we've been locked in with um, COVID and the pandemic. How does it feel to get back out there and interact with the people once again? Man, it, it feels it feels great. You know, to have that true human interaction. And I know it's a it's a cliche and it's a term, but the vibes are there. The vibes are real, man. And 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 it's nothing like getting on that stage, whether it's five people in front of you or five hundred, man. It's that human interaction. You know, you 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 are, you know, just giving love, and all and all you really want is to get that love back. So it's it's a reciprocation, man. And and, and I'm happy to be back outside doing my thing. Yeah, man, because we did a great we did a great job of still being entertained within the culture with the verses and you had your virtual Absolutely. concerts, but it ain't like that in, in your face interaction because you get to see what records the people are responding to. Exactly and exactly, uh, you know. With that with that being said. Uh, I, I just dropped um, my newest single off my new project entitled Zip Zero, and the response, um, we're, and we, you know, we've been out here on the, in the Midwest strictly, but the Midwest um, um, has been embracing Zip Zero. You know, every time we drop it, uh, you know, the, it, the beat is, is 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 hitting. You know, the lyrics mm-hmm. are braggadocio. You know, just that old chest pumped out. I'm the best you can't see me type of vibe that, you know, hip hop was based on. So, um, yeah, man, the, the response has been good and that, that the vibes have been out there. Like I said. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's gravitating that energy, man. Cause I heard the record before we got on the air and I'm like, that's the type of feel that we looking for, man. Like braggadocious lyrics, feel good production. It's the perfect match. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my my record company was talking to, um talking to me um about a remix and maybe you know uh, uh you know uh the the video that's out right it's a it's a amalgamation of a lot of old school clips of of you know cult classic movies black exploitation but um I I I can see I can see I can see the dance coming you know so I can see the Zip Zero dance coming I can see the remix coming <laughs> man so. Everybody stay tuned. You feel me? Yeah, and on top of that, we talking about how technology advanced, man. It's crazy how you could become literally a millionaire getting your music out there just by TikTok alone, just by somebody dancing to your music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah man. It, and and, and uh, like I'm not mad at it. You know, I, I uh, you you put you put. A, a, a good record in, in the hands of the youngsters, and they just they just gonna take it and run with it, and do so, do some things with it you never even envisioned with your own record. So, I'm all for it. Yeah, stuff like that that furthers the culture, because I, I did some work Indeed. myself with one of the artists, and next thing you know, he got a million hits on his TikTok, and I was like. Man, you got some hidden you got some hidden checks coming right there, buddy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just by somebody yeah. dancing your music. Yeah, man. And, and after having a, uh, the little talk with my record company, like I said, uh, you know, I'm I'm not on TikTok. I don't have a TikTok, but um, uh, next next week that may very well change. <laughs> For real, man. But that's dope. Just though, you know, because so basically, us, man. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just, I was just gonna say. So basically, as an independent artist, you know the only the the only difference between underground and commercial is the amount of people who know about you. You know, as an independent artist, you know you know you, you put a lot of love and a lot of uh, 
uh, heartfelt energy into your, your music. So, of course, you want any and everybody to be able to feel the same thing. So it's it, it's not a war between the underground and, and commercial. It's just different avenues to get to the same destination, brother. And i sorry for cutting you off. I'm, I'm all ears. Oh, it's all good, man. It's all good. Just you know how the flow gets sometimes. You know, we just we just get out there a little bit. But with us, we with us gaining new audiences and everything. We are episode four hundred eighty-one. We appreciate you being a part of this. That's beautiful. We want to know about your journey, man. Like, what made you get into hip hop in the first place and your come up? Well, I mean, like like a lot of us, you know, it, it's, it, it, it all comes down to the music, you know, and it's a cliche, but when I fell in love with hip-hop, I was about 15 years old, brother, and, uh, and like a lot of us, it, hip-hop was new, and it was a thing to do, and we got, we got into it, you know, because it was fun. Now, at the time, when it hit me, you know, uh, you know I, was, I was collecting tapes, and you know, listen to the music, you know, the late night radio shows. But at the time, I grew up with my grandmother, and you know, just out of respect, I, I knew how how much turntables um, and equipment cost at the time. So I couldn't fix my face to ask my grandmother to buy me any any anything of that nature. She did everything in the world for me, you know, and that was just something that I wanted to do. And I felt like, hey, one of these days, I, I'll maybe get my own but I wasn't going to ask my grandmother so I kind of me and my best friends shout out to Scott Wilkerson but me and my best friend we collected the tapes man we 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 went to the parties we played the tapes and um I was a I was a good dancer I wasn't a break dancer but I was like you know popping and locking and gigging and you know the high top fade and the um baggy (laughs) pants and the and the and and uh you know I'm saying the shirts and the patent leather shoes that was me back then you know so i couldn't get the equipment so i was you know i was I was a hip-hop dancer and i got recruited by a group out of oakland california um by the name of apg action Pack gangsters and mind you i'm i'm a 16 15 16 year old kid in, in high school and so i was asked to audition for this group uh, we drove to oakland auditioned in the street and they was like you guys are in and we celebrated with 40s you know and uh wow. so that was my first introduction in the in the hip hop i was 16 doing a lot of shows in in 21 and over venues um and my mom used to come check me out but we were even on the radio and so i you know i was i was bragging to my, you know my fellow high school students like hey i'm in this rap group in oakland and everybody's like, nah, you, you, you fronting, you not in that group, you, you, you playing, you playing, you capping, right? And I was like, man, I'm in that group, I'm gonna I'm show y'all, I'm gonna show y'all. And so I convinced um, the principal of my high school to let my rap group come to the school at lunch and do a performance in the theater. And I was, that was my first booking, and little did I know, you know. I was 15, I'm 40-something years, 40 years old later, you know what I'm saying? And now that was my first book, and I'm actually an independent booking agent as well. So that that just brings me back to my first booking. So I brought my group to the school. We did our thing. I was, You know, that was back when all hip-hop groups had a, had a DJ, hype man, and dancers. So everybody, you know, got to do their own solo thing, you know, the dancers. But when it came time for the DJ to do a solo, brother... Man, let me tell you, the response that he got, he took two copies of um, the DLC is funky enough. One, and then comes the two to the three, one, one, and just started doing his routine back to back, all of that stuff. Man, and just everybody's watching him. And the response that he got, I was like, you know what? This dance and stuff is cool, but that's what I really want to do. And it just took me back to, you know, I was like, man, at some point I got to get some turntables and do my own thing and so within um by the time i graduated high school i graduated in 1991 i started djing in 1993 but the dj from my group his name was dj j cut and he is responsible um for me being dj true justice to this day because 
after that day, it was, it was I, I never looked back. Man, and we going back to that time period, man, because we had DJ Sir Jinx on the show a while back, and we going back to the time where mixtapes were actually mixtapes. Like, you had people Absolutely. putting in freestyles, you had your scratching. See, mixtapes today, they're basically more so like underground albums and compilations, but back then, a mixtape was more so like you showcasing your skills on the behind the turntables and you probably had your homies freestyling up there and doing little records here and there, you know, having fun. I bet those run for some good money now. Oh yeah, man. That's how, that's how, that's how I got my, that's uh, how, so they say that's how I got skin in the game. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? That's how, the, you know, the mixtapes was really what put me on the map. Cause number one, I started DJing in 1993 um, and shortly after, I went to um, I went away to school. I went to the Institute of Audio Research in New York City, down in the village next door to D'Agostino's. You know what I'm saying? So I was in school, you know, uh, honing my craft as an audio engineer. And being from California, uh, we talking about '93, '94, '95. So the mixtape scene in New York was crazy. And I'm and we still talking about actual tapes, but you know, cats like Clue, SNS, Chubby Chub, you know, uh, these cats were making great money. Uh, it's over? These cats were making great money, you know, selling mixtapes and making a living off of that type of thing. And I just peeped that and I graduated uh, from engineering school and then took, took that experience, you know, back to California. And, and and you know and pattern myself after the New York DJs and started making mixtapes. So that was my introduction in the game. That's how I got you know a little claim to fame. So the, the mixtape thing is what birthed DJ True Justice as well. Yeah, man, it's crazy how you what we we reflect back to that period, especially the '90s, because then the DJ they used to they were getting record deals off putting out mixtapes. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. It was a it was a it was a good time and and uh, hip hop evolution. You know we here now, but it, it started with the DJ, and yeah, yeah, indeed, man. And going on, and then you started producing your own albums, man. Like, let's talk about your baby, like your first project, man. What was like putting that together? Um, it was, I, I, w- I would say it was just a natural evolution of, you know, the mixtape scene. And after doing, I mean, uh, between 93 and 96, I, I self-produced maybe about 20 mixtapes locally. And then I got a chance to hit the road. And after touring and, and seeing the country, when I came back, I was like, man, I want to make, you know, original, you know, nothing against the mixtapes, but I just had a, had a, had a motivation and and uh just tried to make my own music with uh you know my own my own people you know my own MCs the the talent that I saw out there that I wanted to develop so my first album um it was self titled came out in 2007 <clears throat> I had a um, uh one one um one video off of that thing it's called 808 and that was that was that was my baby you know, 808, and then back with this face. Um, man, it was just a good time, and 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 ever since then, you know, I've I've done mixtapes in between, and I'm about to drop uh, an EP on Friday on all digital digital platforms, all all service platforms um, on Friday, April 8th, is entitled the Coach EP, and like we were saying, Zip Zero was the first single, so. 2007 was my first album, True Justice. 2000, that was 2016 was my second album um, entitled The Man of Steel. And that was, uh, had major label distribution uh, through Gorilla Funk Recordings. So, man, making music, uh, cutting, and then, uh, you know, joining Justin's Case. We just dropped our our album, but we're only selling it on tour. So we'll be we'll be dropping that later this year on all digital platforms. 
Yeah, man. And telling us about um, Gorilla Funk, man. That means you work you working with direct with Paris, right? Yes, yes. Paris is 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 big homie, my mentor, uh, boss man, and you know, and all of that. So yeah, I, I put out my album with him, and we're still working together to this day. He's actually featured on um my upcoming um, Coach EP that drops on April eighth. Harry, I, that's one of my best yeah. friends too. We we speak all the time. Dude, that's one of the, probably one of the most coldest spitters I've ever heard, especially on the East Coast. Like the song he had, um, <coughs> the days of old. That transition out here. Oh yeah, the days of old. That was on um his second album, Sleeping with the Enemy. Oh, that's my favorite video, but I like that. Yeah. yeah. Then he came out with uh, Bush Killer, and that made me a fan right there. Cause I was like, man, these oh, y'all open cats be with this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I was like, man, this is not- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I man, I uh, he was respond. Paris was responsible for me, you know, uh, being on the road for the first time, and then touring with him and doing those records every night. And we went to Europe in two thousand nine, and just seeing the the reaction of the, you know, uh, the the love of a Bay Area, you know, what I'm saying MC that's actually you know speaking with substance you know, social commentary and, you know, the plight of black people in the United States, you know, and that's, and that's something that was dope then and dope now because we're still carrying the torch. Definitely, man. I mean, that's what, that's why y'all guys movement was needed, man. Cause y'all came at a time where hip hop needed those voices, man, because in some cases the, the you know, people that represent the culture, they become eventually disconnected, especially when they get the bag. So when you guys, Absolutely. y'all come around, y'all still keeping it authentic, y'all keeping it culture, and y'all still speaking to the people, and that's what's definitely needed. And that's what's definitely needed, man. And and going on to the next question, man, what are your thoughts on the music today? Like, do you see it evolving or you see it de- disvolving? <clears throat> Well, I, I see the music today is 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 a natural evolution, because uh, uh-huh. you know when we when when we were coming up, you know, hip hop was new and it was brand new. But you have you have people that that grow grow up strictly on hip hop. You know, they 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 can't think of a time where hip hop didn't exist, and, and to them, you know, it means a little bit different. Each generation. Um, you know, has their, you know, their likes and their dislikes. And I just think, you know, hip hop is always going to keep pushing the envelope. And you have fundamentalists like myself who like to integrate, you know, you know, the old school, traditional, the fundamentals, but then we're also pushing it forward and speaking about today, you know, what what's going on today. Now, as far as the youngsters and, and what the young kids are doing, that's them, man. I can't, I can't front on them. You know what I'm saying? I, all I could do is embrace them. And if I, and if I have a chance, I'll give them a platform. And that's basically what Flat Frost is all about. You know, giving, not only, you know, coming out with, with the groups that you love, you know, but giving a platform for new artists to, you know, express themselves. So right now, uh, honestly, bro, we're on the road pushing 50. You know what I'm saying? Down the cats that are like damn near just now 22, 23 years old. So it's a, we can definitely coexist on the same plane. I, I just want to, you know, I don't hate no this music. I just want everybody, you know, where it came from and where it's at. And I'm glad you say that, man, because and do, you know, and doing a platform like this one. It opened up. It opened up our doors to different sounds. It opened our doors to different voices. And there's a lot of young, hungry talent out there, more than I thought it was. And sometimes, when you get exposed to, you know, a limited part of the culture, you know, it makes you become the grumpy old man in the room. You know, <laughs> and sometimes you get mad, like, man, this dude is garbage. But there's so much out there, man, and that's why we wanted to create this platform to give those people that that look. Because, like, every day we find that somebody new, like Jadakiss said it best, there's a guy bet, better than Jordan waiting to get that break. 
So we look at it like that, like that with rappers. Mhm. Definitely. In the West Coast, they got a, they have a, they have a real big movement with the youth movement going on in the, in the East Coast as well. With Griselda, they they lead in that movement in a lot of ways. So basically, we tell people if hip hop's in good hands, you just gotta find it. And come and come see y'all on tour, damn it! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I had to throw that out there. We had to throw that out there, man. We uh, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep pushing, and actually, we actually had a chance to bring Slap Frost to the East Coast in 2020 on on our first nationwide outing, you know, with the brand. Uh, unfortunately, we did we did complete our East Coast leg and our, our our down South leg, and we are on our way back to the West Coast when uh, you know that the DC hit, and we were forced to come home. But now it, it, here in in 22, man, we it's it's a new year. We 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 press the reset button. Cats is outside now, so we are in the middle of our Midwest tour, and we're gonna come back to the West Coast. But um, we we looking to come, you know, keep spreading this love, uh, you know, up and down the coast and the east coast too. So man, be on the lookout. I might I'm I might calling you, be like, hey man, we we didn't touch them. Hey man, we if y'all come to the Carolinas, man, just let us know, man. Because if anything, the Carolinas is becoming a big a big bargaining chip now. The J Cole he had a Dreamville festival yesterday out here. Oh, that was yesterday. Dreamville was yesterday. Okay, we touched the Carolina. Yeah, we touched the a little bit of the Carolina. We actually, we had a good time with Michael Marshall and Lenore, South Carolina. Man, we it man, it was crazy. Yeah, the city has grown more so in depth within the past ten to fifteen years. Well, we came a long way from the PD Pablo, North Carolina days. Man, we we get we we getting the big dogs out here now. Yeah. Definitely. And that's, a, and that's a beautiful part about the evolution, man. Yeah. That fixed my, my phone. You on the air? Yeah, I'm here, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to, I had to fix my phone a little bit. No but worries. Yeah, after the tour, man. We, had, we hanging out. Project dropping. Yeah, we got the pro. You all got you guys got the compilation coming out. And man, you just a busy dude, man. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah, man. Just just trying to stay, just trying to stay busy, man. Because when 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 you're out of sight, what you out of mind. So we we keeping it popping. So Aaron, for everybody out there, we got about a week left. Uh, if you got some, if you got some folks in the Midwest, give give them a shout. You can check us out slapfrost dot com. You know, check out our dates. Like I said, slapfrost dot com, and um. April 8th, the Coach EP drops on all digital streaming platforms. Um, that's going to drop on my imprint, Francisco Street Productions, put out by uh, Rap Bay Urban Life Distribute out here in the Bay Area. Yes, sir, man. For why, baby? You know, I know 8th, you got You can grab it up. Yes, sir, man, because I know you got to probably another interview to do, man. But we want to get this in, though, because, man, you guys are – a pivotal point of the culture, man. We got to support the DJ, man, because the DJ need all the love. Without the DJ, we don't get the damn music. You know what I'm saying? Man, without the DJ, it just doesn't happen, bro. It just doesn't happen. Back in, and, and, and as it was then, as it is now. Yes, sir, man. So we definitely appreciate this bill, man. I, I mean, you guys keep doing what you do. And let people know where they can find you at on the social media handles. Oh, definitely, man. On all, across all social uh, media, you can find me at, at DJ True Justice. You know, Twitter at DJ True Justice, IG at DJ True Justice. And if you want, if you want a book, just put in DJ True Justice. You'll, it'll all pop up there, you know. And slide on over to djtruejustice.com. You you can get me that way or slapfrost.com. Either way, man, I'm I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? If you talk, I talk back. Most definitely, y'all hear it right there. Y'all be sure to catch catch y'all on that tour, man. And behave yourselves, man. 
Y'all yeah, be acting crazy out there in these shows. Right on, man. And, and, and soon, man, I'm a, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be tapping that line. I'm a, I'm gonna hit the Carolinas, man, before 22 is over. That's my word. Most most deaf, man. I got you. I got you. I got you on the speed dial, man. So we gonna definitely keep in touch. And we will also want to send a big shout out to Aries for making this thing happen, man. We all need we need word you publicists. We need you good publicists, managers that do the good deeds for the culture and making guys like you. That's an important part of this culture, a part of our platform. We appreciate you a lot. Absolutely. Shout out UBO Entertainment. Right on. Most deaf, man. So, yeah, we definitely going to keep it t- 